Hey, it's Phil here from Euroheat, and today I'm gonna to tell you about the five things you should look for when choosing your domestic hot water heat pump, which is gonna supply your hot water for your showers, your kitchen, your bathrooms, all your hot water needs. Now, there's a lot of heat pump brands out there. Five years ago, there wasn't really that many. 20 years ago, when we started dealing with heat pumps, there were hardly any, but now there's dozens. And what we see is a lot of people are getting let down by their hot water heat pumps. So I wanted to give you five points that you should look for when selecting your hot water heat pump. So the first thing you want to look for is the COP, which is the efficiency rating. And generally this is given as a number such as 3.5, 3.8, 4, some people even say 6. Now, what you're looking for, obviously the higher the better, that's the more efficient it is. So you put in one kilowatt of electricity and if it has a COP of four, you're gonna get four kilowatts of heat out. So 400% efficiency, which is great. But the mistake that we see people making is they just believe these people that are selling the heat pumps too easily. And when you look at a lot of the data sheets, they might say a COP of five or six or even higher, but they are at uh, conditions outside of the normal sort of standard ratings so uh, a lot of manufacturers for these domestic hot water heat pumps in Australia will offer the COP at an air temperature of 15 or 20 and that air temperature is important because that's where the heat is harvested from uh, and then the water temperature should be quoted at say 60 degrees because that's what has to be in the tank that's what you're going to use now some manufacturers they will be a bit cheeky and they will say uh, have the air temperature at 25 or even 30 35 degrees which means it's easier for the heat pump to make the energy and they might have the water temperature lower at like say 45 which is what we've seen and that means that of course the heat pump's going to have a really big cop and so initially it looks really good but then when it starts working when it starts producing the hot water for your house you seem to be using a lot of energy because it's not actually as efficient as they sort of made it out to be. So what you're looking for is say the air temperature of about 15 to 20 and then water temperature of about 60 and a COP in the range of about 3.8 to 4, that's what you're looking for. And the thing is people claim that they can do all these magic COPs but the thing is it's limited by the laws of physics, right? And most of them use the same technology. So that means that they're all bound to get similar results, right? Some of them might be able to squeeze out a few extra points of efficiency, but generally they're all the same. So if it's something higher than four, I don't particularly believe them. So second, what you wanna look for is the compressor. And the compressor is like the main engine inside the heat pump. And so that is what compresses the gas and allows you to extract the energy from the air and heat up the water. So there are some good brands out there Danfoss, Mitsubishi, Copeland, and then there are some not so good brands. And what that means is that might not work as efficiently, they might be louder, and the longevity of them might not be that great. So I would encourage you to look for a good brand of compressor that, uh, you know, if you ask someone in the know, maybe uh, a refrigeration mechanic that deals with heat pumps and those refrigeration circuits would recommend. So the third point you wanna look for is the noise level. Because if it works really noisily and it's annoying you, and your neighbors, it's keeping you awake or waking you up early in the morning or in the middle of the night, what's the point? That's just a pain in the backside. So you wanna look for a verified uh, noise rating or a decibel reading rating, which is below 60 decibels of sound power level. And most heat pumps can achieve that, to be honest, but the lower, the better. So if you find one at 56, 54, 52 decibels sound power level, that's perfect, that's what you're looking for. Now, that sounds sort of like a big fridge running, so not too bad, that's fine, especially during the day when there's background noise and um, you, know, you won't really hear that. But you can still hear it in the middle of the night when it's dead quiet, so definitely don't put the heat pump next to your bedroom windows or anywhere else that's noise sensitive. Put it next to your laundry or somewhere where it's not gonna annoy you or your neighbors. So the fourth thing you want to look for is preventing the heat you've paid for, um, the hot water, 
you don't want that heat escaping into the atmosphere because then you're just losing money and there's two ways to prevent the heat from being lost. The first one is the tank insulation. So a lot of heat pumps have a standard tank insulation thickness of about 35 to 40 millimeters. Now that's not too bad, that's fine, but some of them are much thicker. So the one say over here behind me, that's got 70 millimeters of good quality insulation in there. So that means that it's far slower at losing the heat that you've paid to produce meaning that you can produce the heat during the day and it can sit there all night and it'll still be hot in the morning. So that's what you're looking for. Now, the second thing you wanna look for with not losing that heat is that all the pipes are insulated. So you might see behind me, there's silver insulation there. And that insulation is over the pipes and the valves and things that come out of the, the heat pump because they all get hot too, they're connected. There's water touching them they heat up and they lose energy to the atmosphere. So you want to insulate all of those and ideally you want something that's going to last the test of time with our uh, pretty harsh Australian sun um, and weather. So insulate all the pipes. So the fifth thing you want to look for is, is there going to be a lot of maintenance with the heat pump that you choose? Now. If you've had a electric hot water system in the past, you might know about the sacrificial anodes that are in them. And they are there to protect the tank. So those anodes get sacrificed, they get eaten away instead of the tank itself. And that means that the tank theoretically lives a long time as long as you replace those anodes every two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years. It depends on the water quality, the system, and a few other factors. But First of all, you have to remember to replace these anodes. And second of all, it costs money every time you want to replace these. So there's an ongoing cost. Now, there are some heat pumps out there which have a clever device in there, which is say, uh, electric anode or an impressed current anode. And what that does is it puts a, sends a little uh, voltage through the tank, which means that it deters all those things that are trying to eat away at the tank. And it, the heat pump becomes maintenance free. The only catch is that it has to be plugged into power. You can't turn it off from the power for more than something like 12 hours. But as long as it's plugged in, which I recommend it should be, it's going to automatically look after itself and be maintenance free for 10, 15 years, as long as the heat pump itself lasts. So what's not super important with a heat pump? So something that I see that people are uh, looking for all the time, and this, you might disagree with me and it might be controversial, is an app, people have a fascination with having an app on their phone and they want to see, you know, they want to be connected to the heat pump and be able to switch it on and off and do things with it. I think it's a complete gimmick. A good heat pump is efficient and you just let it do its own thing. You don't need to turn it on and off. You don't need to do anything with it. it, it a good heat pump works and you let it do its thing. You leave it, leave it plugged in, you let it do its magic, you just enjoy the benefits. One other thing that I see that people are really interested in is timing the heat pump operation with the solar PV production. Now, I think this is a great idea and different heat pumps have different ways of doing this. Do I think it's essential? I don't because the heat pump actually consumes so little power, it doesn't make a huge difference to your power bill. So if it's easy to do and low cost, which sometimes it is, great, go for it it's gonna work for free basically. But sometimes it's a bit more complicated and it might cost, you know, if it costs more than 500 bucks, definitely not worth it. So they're the five things to look out for. One thing that I think is a gimmick and one thing that is worth doing if it doesn't cost much money. So if you'd like help with your domestic hot water heat pump, please do give us a call at Euroheat. We'd love to help you out.